Georgia kicks it off for the Lions. The first time ever these fabled institutions have met in the game of football. And it's a good return for the Wolverines back to the 28-yard line for Derek Alexander. Now, the people in the trigger positions in this ball game, Todd Collins, number 10. You see that he's thrown only six interceptions and 279 attempts. He's a junior. Three of those interceptions came against Notre Dame. The backs and receivers in the ball game for Michigan, of course, Tyrone Wheatley is the key man. Derek Alexander is back healthy, one of the best wideouts in the country when he is healthy. And here's your first play of the ball game with Wheatley lined up as the deep man out of the formation. And they send the tight end, number 80, moving behind the quarterback. Back and forth he goes like a windshield wiper. They give the ball to Wheatley, and Wheatley breaks it over the left side. And this is the man that kept Joe Paterno and his staff awake all week long. He's one of the great running backs in the country. The offensive front for Michigan, Runyon, Miller, Milia, Marinaro, and Sullivan, there are no returning starters in that offensive front. And they have not gelled as yet. But getting Milia back from injury is a great big plus because Mark is the guy that calls the blocking assignments once the play has been called. He is the leader of the offensive front. It is a first down on the initial run by Wheatley out to the 41-yard line. And the Wolverines uh, move too soon. Mike Sullivan, the right side, a redshirt freshman, seemed to be the man who moved too soon. The referee is Jim Kimmerling. The Penn State defense will line up with uh, Lou Benfati leading the four down linemen, and these guys are about as good as anybody's. I mean, they are really outstanding. Two of those uh, the Penn State linebackers are ex-quarterbacks, Gelheiser and Holmberg, and the defensive secondary is made up of a bunch of headhunters. I mean, they will knock your hat off if you get in their neighborhood. We look forward to an old-fashioned head-knocking football game this afternoon in Happy Valley. First down and 15 after the penalty. Here's another flag thrown. And the running play is good for the 40-yard line with Pete Wheatley carrying. And once again, the referee, Jim Kimmerling, steps up. And I think this time it was Tayoka Jackson who got caught in the neutral zone. Offside, Penn State. Gary Moeller, who is a bit beleaguered this year because there was so much conversation coming into this season that Michigan was capable of challenging for the national championship. But he's had so many injuries and lost so many people. Five linebackers alone are gone. The offensive line has not come together as yet. A lot of factors involved. And, of course, Joe Paterno is, in fact, a living legend in this part of the country. John Ritchie is in the backfield now for the Michigan Wolverines, the up man, number 40, and Collins' first pass of the day. Swung out for Wheatley. This is what they'll do with him. Derek Pana comes up, and uh, the strong safety, or the hero back, as they call it, gets enough of uh, Wheatley to take him down. That time you saw a little bit of that turf chunk up when he made his cut. Collins has got to have a good day. And we mentioned in the opening that the running game needs to be uh, productive, at least to take some pressure off of him. If they can't get the ball to Wheatley running the ball, the little swing pass that you saw in that last play will be very productive. It is second down and seven now after we finally get a playoff without a penalty. And that's Walter Smith in motion handed to the up man, John Ritchie. Ritchie is a freshman from Mechanicsburg, PA. He got away and went off to Michigan to play his football. Story of the game uh, for Michigan. Can their offensive line control a very strong and tough defensive line? That defensive line is fifth in the nation against the run. And for Penn State, their third rushing offense in the nation against that battered uh, Michigan uh, front. Uh, that'll be the story today. Wheatley and goes into a flank position. Shea Foster is the single back. As they spread them out with this alignment, Todd Collins to throw it down the pipe. There's Derek Alexander, a catch at the Penn State 35-yard line in front of Shelly Hammonds. First down, Wolverine. Hammonds, an outstanding coverage guy. This is just good coverage. Hammonds can't do anything more than this. Three deep zone. Alexander keeps it wide to the outside of the field, and the ball is thrown wide. 
That's also like a curl or it's called a wide slant or a wide post to keep it away from the free safety. Two for two for Collins. The ball rests right on the 35. First down for the Wolverines. Mercury Hayes is the man in motion. He's the speedster. Gives the ball to Ricky Powers. And Ricky Powers, the senior out of Akron, will pick up three yards down to the 32-yard line. Last week in the game and the loss at Michigan State, the Wolverines ran the ball 23 times and gained a mere 33 yards. 23 times in a game rushing for Michigan is an all-time record low. And 33 yards production on the ground is the first time in, well, 28 years that they uh, gained that few yardage in a ball game. Second down and seven. Those wideouts are going to be tired time today is over all that motion stuff. That ball is drilled sharply, caught by Amani Toomer, number 18, the sophomore from Concord, California. He went down, made his plant in front of Marlon Forbes, the cornerback on the field side, and it's another Michigan first down. So they are marching down the field. Two well-coached teams, Keith, and two uh, teams offensively for Michigan. They're doing what they need to do, throwing the ball, playing pitch and catch and running. Defensively for Penn State, they're not doing anything aggressively, setting back, they're not making any mistakes. They may start attacking in this area, though. First down, snap is at the 22-yard line. Wheatley. They'll call him down after a yard. Shelly Hammonds came over. Bonna, the strong safety, committed early and plugged uh, the inside uh, lane for Wheatley, and he had to go all the way to the sideline. First possession of the game. Penn State is yet to have the ball. No gain on the play. Call it second down and ten. In fact, the ball looks to me like it's closer to the 23 now than the 22. And Wheatley is the single back. There's some room in the middle. And the gain is to the 19. Holmberg, Rob Holmberg, who transferred over to Penn State from the Naval Academy. And the reason he did it, basically, is because the cuts that were being imposed on the military that much of a career future. The top 25 today, and uh, those teams are idle today. And in the case of Miami, uh, still very happy to get some time off. Penn State had an open week to prepare for Michigan, and after this game, they have an open week to prepare for Ohio State. Jim Kimberly calls time. It is his timeout. Collins. Swanee, Lynn Swan. Well, Keith, the official called the uh, timeout because coming into this end zone, the student section sits right to the left of the Michigan offense, and they are making a tremendous amount of noise. That is going to be a factor throughout the ball game, so what they're going to have to do is call a play that will work in all circumstances, and the receivers will have to look in for the snap of the ball. That's so, what got Joe upset. No reason for the uh, referee to come in and, and uh, call the timeout if the, the crowd's too loud. Although maybe they were covering up the 25 second clock. Yeah, this is something you got to live with. It's like that. And Kimberling now is going to take another one because Collins is saying, uh, our people can't hear me. Well, this is the old crowd noise rule, Keith, in yeah. college football. If you, uh, you can't hear. This is what their official does. First time, it's a referee's timeout. Second time, referee's timeout. Captains in public address announce and notify the crowd. The third time, it's a timeout or a five-yard penalty if timeouts are exhausted. And then a five-yard penalty each additional time. Well, I'm going to have to take off my headset. There is, there is some kind of a, there is some kind of a public address announcement uh, going on right now. How much effect it's going to have on the fans? Of course, the defensive players asking them to be quiet.
Now Kimmerling has said to Collins, run the play. Run the play. Stop begging. Run the play. Now you can charge Michigan with a timeout, can he? Yep. The third one. He did charge it. Penn State for the timeout. The charge timeout. That's got Joe steaming. He wants to talk to the official. But his timeout is charged against Penn State. Most car owners praise the quality of their purchases. But only one car line has been ranked best overall in initial quality by J.D. Power and Associates. Lexus. So the question isn't whether you put your car on a pedestal, but how often. And the Lexus LS is thousands less than the leading European competition at your Lexus dealer. We'll be back after these messages. The rush is on for the incomparable GE Profile Refrigerator. The GE Profile is full of smart ideas, like a shelf that tucks away for tall things and shelves that glide out so you can find things. It's called Smart Space Design. Smart ideas that let you put things in, take things out, and clean things up so quickly and easily that you'll never again miss your favorite commercials. Wouldn't it be great if you were stranded on a desert island huh? with a beautiful woman named Betty? Cool. And while scouting the island, you were suddenly surrounded. You! But then, they oh. noticed your shoes. You! Great one! Booga booga! So they gave you gifts. Keystone! Keystone, Keystone Light, and Keystone Dry. Especially lined for really smooth. Bottle be a taste! In tear! Wait in time! Wouldn't that be great? Big Ten Power Ohio State hosts rival Michigan State. Tennessee takes on number two Alabama for other key regional action next on ABC's College Football. I tell you one thing that none of these officials have gone anywhere near that man. <laughs> well, <laughs> let me say this. I think I think Gary Moeller and the offensive staff have schooled and prepared Todd Collins for this uh, eventuality because as soon as the crowd noise got too loud. Collins knew exactly what to do. The official stepped in, and this is the first time that I've ever seen this call. The crowd is not as loud this time. Well, he needs to just go on first sound and get the play in motion. And, uh, right. you know, get a big play out of it, and that'll set him up. That play is inside the 15-yard line. Uh, Brian Gelsheiser bringing Tyrone Wheatley down. And that'll look... Uh, two yards needed on fourth down coming up. We've been here so long arguing about crowd noise that it's uh, you almost lose track of where you are but we have now come to a fourth down and two and that's going to get Elizabeth in the ball game. Peter Elizabeth will come in. He's three out of seven in his field goal tries and he's zero for two from this distance. 30 to 39 yards. This will be a 31 yard field goal try. So Michigan trying here to get on the board with the field goal. No pressure on it. It is hooked off to the left side, so Elizabeth misses the extra point. So a bit of an entertaining and adventurous first possession by the Michigan Wolverines, and now Penn State is going to get the football finally. <laughs> that is a big miss, Keith. Michigan coming off of a surprising loss at uh, Michigan State last week. Had a good drive going. Offensive line was dominating the defensive line. Moeller on third down decided to go for a running play, get it in front of the goal post, make it an easier kick, get on the scoreboard first, and his kicker kicks it to the left, and the momentum that he would have had now is, is gone, and the Penn State has the ball. At the 20-yard line with Perry Collins at quarterback, Kajana Carter is number 32, and Brian O'Neill is 29. That familiar set, they throw it on first down to O'Neill out of the backfield, and he will be just short of the first down at the 29. Kerry Collins, 6'5", 235, a junior from West Lawn, Pennsylvania. There are his 1993 stats. And he had won the job. John Sacco quit school. He's now the man. Bobby Ingram has caught 26 uh, balls so far this season. 
He is their principal speedster. LaBarca can run, but Ingram is the man they look for. And there's Bobby. They beat on you with that running game and then let it fly to him, and it works. Taking off the tackler behind the line of scrimmage to Johnny Carter, a junior from Westerville, Ohio, makes it first down Penn State at the 38. The offensive front for Penn State's a pretty good one. No real hoop de do hot dog all Americans up there. Just good, solid, solid. well trained football players. Solid. I'm not saying that some of them aren't all Americans. I'm merely saying that they they're may, all pretty good. They may well be in the years to come. They're, right. they're all young. Here's Collins on a roll to the right. Whistles one to the sideline, and the pass is caught. Just short of midfield by Chip LaBarca, the senior from Bayville, New Jersey. The Michigan defensive unit will line up this way, and uh, they're weak in the middle. Tony Henderson, or whoever's in there at nose tackle, has got to have a good day today if they're going to handle this Penn State running game. Matt Dyson's another guy that's got to step up and play well. Dyson's been injured, needs to play well. Secondary's pretty good. They can run with almost anybody. First down, Penn State just short of midfield. No score, first quarter. Michigan missing on a field goal. Run. Here comes Carter. These Michigan uh, defensive people are going to learn early that these Penn State running backs are cup guys. I mean, you 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 can't arm back them. You got to wrap. They're going to break loose and go. This was a little toss to the tailback, but it was designed to go inside. Now watch, straight blocking everywhere. He just the play is defense pretty well, but Powers 95. There was a crack there, and he just didn't fill the crack. The linebacker, inside linebacker, the spot where Morrison, who is injured, would have been. Mike Archie, number two, is now in. Carter is out for a breather. He's put him in position here for the first down. And Terry Collins throws. Pass caught by Archie out of the backfield. He goes down at the 11-yard line. And now let's check in for the first time with John Saunders. In Keith Syracuse and Pittsburgh, Marvin Graves was actually knocked out of the game with a bruised shin. He's back now, but this is Jay Jones who grabs the punt and takes off 84 yards for the Panthers. Not touched to the end zone, and Pitt tries on the upset, has a 7-0 lead. Keith. 11-yard line. It is second down and four for Penn State. They're threatening to score the first points of the ball game. Gajarner is back in, and Carter slams it into the middle. Trying for his first down, he's going to come up short. He got just over the 10. So it's the Penn State running game with a, you notice that Collins came out in the early part of this possession, the ball of the year. That spread him out. That's good thinking. Uh, Penn State in the uh, Big Ten. They're right up there in every offensive category except passing. They are last in passing and first in rushing, as I mentioned, averaging nearly 300 a game. It is third down and three from the 10. Collins rolls out. He's got his first down. That's what he wanted. If he couldn't get in, he'd take the yardage for the first down, and it's first and goal to Michigan seven. Well, that's a nice call. Fran Ganner, the offensive coordinator, along with Joe Paterno. Of course, uh, these plays, the first 10, 15, or 20, are scripted. Three wide receivers to the wide side of the field. Collins breaks containment of Dyson, gets outside. Now it's an option. He tells Archie, I'm going to run it. It's not that far. I can make the first down. That's a good call. Carter is the deep back. He's got it inside the five and goes down to the two. He just kind of wedged himself off of Malinowski and Pickett and just squirted through there. Both teams took their opening kickoff and have moved right down the field. Michigan missed their short field goal and uh, Penn State now inside the five-yard line. John Carter, 32, Brian O'Neill, 29, and uh, Brian Milton is number 22. And 
This is O'Neill. And a penalty flag. Let's see if they made a mistake in the shadow of the goal line. It's against Penn State. Somebody moving. Concentration. Such a vital thing when you're down this close under this kind of pressure and particularly early in a ball game. Joe's been around 28 years at Penn State. He is the winningest active Division I A coach. 28 years. That you gotta add 16 years additional to that. Five yards, repeat, second down. Five yard penalty. I was gonna say that uh, Paterno has been really had been at Penn State for 44 years. He was there 16 years before he became the head coach. The ball comes back to the eight yard line. There it is, second down and goal. Carter and O'Neill are the running backs. Gary Collins looks to throw it, does throw it, and his arm was hit just as he turned it loose, and it flutters away incomplete, and it was Bobby Powers that got a piece of the quarterback as he tried to get the ball to Bobby Ingram. Michigan not sitting back. Uh, one of the things they're going to do is bring their strong safety. He's going to blitz on the outside. The route now is a little slant, and Collins does the right thing in throwing the same way the blitzer's coming from. See the big hole that's up there? The blitzer comes, creates a hole. If you throw the ball before the safety gets there, the safety blitzer, you're in good shape. Collins rolls it out, goes back the other way, throws the ball for Archie. Archie didn't look back. Archie was looking to block Chuck Winters, never looked for the ball, and it's incomplete. So Penn State got inside the 10-yard line with a first and goal, and then lost their poise and did not come off very well. Craig Fayak will come into the ball game and try a field goal now. And he is on his way to becoming perhaps the leading scorer in the history of the school. He's already the leading place kicker having passed Massimo Manka. This will be a 25 yarder. Four out of eight on the season. The kick is up and uh, he missed it. So both place kickers missed off the first possession of their respective team. Everybody thinks programming a VCR is so incredibly complicated. Record Channel 3, Sunday, 7 p.m., 8 p.m. What's the problem? Magnavox, the only VCR with Smart Talk Remote. Smart, very smart. Who makes the only TV with a smart sound feature which ensures your volume will stay at normal levels? Even when something like this comes on. Magnavox. Smart. Very smart. No use. College football on ABC Sports. Brought to you by Lexus Luxury Automobiles. Including the 1994 ES. Improved. Revised. Refined. In a word. New. BASF. We don't make a lot of the products you buy. We make a lot of the products you buy better. Magnavox. The ingenious products from Magnavox. They're smart. Very smart. And Payne Weber, we believe our most important investment is an investment in relationships. Let me bring you up to date on what's happened in this quarter. Uh, Michigan's first possession, 10 plays, missed field goal, 31 yards. Penn State, 11 plays, missed a 25-yard field goal. And it's no score. Michigan's got the ball back on their 20. Tyrone Wheatley is the single back. He's got the ball. Contact to the backfield. Wheatley shakes it off. Picks up six. Now John Saunders. He's in the ACC, North Carolina, Georgia Tech. Jason Stanisek just tosses this one out to the flats for Leon Johnson, who does the work. 15 yards for the touchdown. 56-yard drive. Eight plays. Keith, back to you, 7 up. Here in a bright sunny day now. It was so foggy this morning you had to feel your way around the parking lot. But the weather has cooperated beautifully and uh, now we've got warm pleasant afternoon. Ball is rolling around on the grass. And Michigan recovers it. Coming back to get it number 33 Shea Foster. Sophomore out of Edmond Oklahoma. And ball got away from Collins. Well, the ball got away from Foster. I don't know what you're saying. <laughs> Todd Barry's wearing out his arm. Michigan has not turned the ball over that often this year. They've only had four fumbles 
that were lost. Bumble is charged to come. Walter Smith. Man in motion. Little fake for Wheatley. Freeze the linebacker. Penalty flag goes down. Number 94 is hollering about it to Eric Ravati, and I think the foul is going to come possibly against Michigan for an illegal block or a hold. It's a hold. So they'll back Michigan up here as they make another mistake. And how's this for a golfer's dream? 18 legendary holes from 18 of the great courses in the country. John Daly, Tom Kite, Fuzzy Zeller, and Davis Love. Unprecedented round of golf. They flew them around in a big jet, and uh, they played all kinds of different holes, and it'll be fun if you love the old game. Chrysler American Grade 18. Coverage begins tomorrow at 4 Eastern, 3 Central, and Pacific here on ABC Sports. Now you find out why Eric Ravati was squawking. Watch it. Runyon 69 is the left tackle. Ravati uses his speed, gets around him, and right there he just grabs his jersey and pulls it down. It's a good call by the official. Ravati came in with four sacks in the first five games. Runyon is an outstanding offensive lineman, although he's only 19 years old. They think he is going to be a great one. Running team is into the ball game now for the Wolverines. On fourth down and 10. As Penn State would rather have them give up the ball than uh, make it third and 20. So the punter Stapleton hits it. Didn't get all of it. It's in over in and it'll be returned by Bobby Ingram, a junior out of Camden, South Carolina. And you hold your breath when he's got the ball. Penn State's possession will start on the Michigan side of the field. Represents the 1,000th ball game of this school's illustrious career, but there's a little question mark. You see, in 1881 against Lewisburg, they played the game, but say, most say it was a rugby game. The rules changed, and then the first official game was supposed to have happened between Bucknell, which was once called Lewisburg, in 1887. Whatever the case, this 1,000th game is the first game against Michigan, and everyone here is behind it, and will keep some kind of keepsake from this immortal game. We're here, Swanee. Let's make this 1,000 and be done with it. The concession folks certainly have tried. I mean, they've had a bumper weekend. This is Carter to John Carter. And he moves the football from the 46, the point of the snap, down near the 40 before Chuck Winters and Alfie Birch break down. The incredible thing to me, though, is, is the, the, the history of these two universities that they've never played. It is amazing when you stop to think. Uh, and Joe Paterno's played a lot of the Big Ten schools, but well, just never has played Michigan. Penn State has played 133 different opponents, and uh, Michigan's played 125 as of today. This ball is thrown to Brian O'Neill out of the backfield. That works for a first down at the 32-yard line. There's nothing fancy. Well, this is what Michigan State did against Michigan last week, and that is short passing underneath the linebackers, dumping it off to the fullback or to the tight end or to the halfback. And as I mentioned earlier, you know, you ask Joe Paterno who calls the plays, and he'll say Fran Ganner, the offensive coordinator. And you ask Ganner, and he says Joe calls him. <laughs> <laughs> Colin gives the ball away to Kajana Carter, and he's got an enormous hole up the middle. Michigan 17 yard line before Chuck Winters can make the cut. We talked about it in the uh, pregame in the uh, up the middle is critical and that's where it was right up the middle. Monday night on ABC Sports Los Angeles Raiders now back in the hunt in the AFC West will be headed to Denver and the Denver Broncos division rival that makes this a very big ball game division rival Monday night live at nine Eastern time six. ABC's NFL Monday Night Football. How about Vince Evans, huh? Yeah. The old man came in and pulled him out. Big game. Mike Archie and John Whitman in the backfield now for the Nittany Lions. Carter has 68 yards on six carries. Archie breaks a tackle up the line of scrimmage. Penalty flags on the sideline. And the ball is down at the 13. Linesman through the flag. Well, Penn State getting down here in the shadow of the goal line, and again, they make a mistake. The 
you know, this is the sixth game of the season. But I guess you got to have been part of this boiling pot. Remember, Penn State had a week off, so they could think and think and think about playing Michigan. Well, I think along with that week off, Joe Paterno's probably saying, yeah, it's, it, it's great for planning and scheming and getting players healthy, but as far as losing your timing and your momentum, I think that suffers a little bit, and I think that's what you're seeing here a little bit on the timing on the first couple of drives for Penn State. First down and 15 now. The ball comes back to the 23, and Kerry Collins throws it down the middle of the pass is incomplete to his tight end, Kyle Brady. And Kyle got a couple of knocks from uh, one of the backers dropping in the strong safety. Well, the two inside linebackers we were talking about right here, Powers and Irons. Now, what Michigan State did last week, the tight end just hooked right in the middle, and they completed these passes. They've been running inside at those two guys, and now they're throwing right between them. This time, they close, react a lot better than they have in the past. Well, it's back to throw it again. And again, it's down the pipe, and it is incomplete. And the ball led the tight end too much. Actually, I think Brady might have been available to him if he hadn't led him so much. And the pass is incomplete. Brady's a big target, 6'6", 255 pounds. And he is really something. He came in here highly touted out of high school. Has not done a lot, but uh, the scouts uh, that I've talked to think uh, they, 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 they say he's chiseled. He reminds people of Russ Francis. Remember Russ Francis played with the Patriots? I remember in Oregon. The way he's built, a good blocker, excellent blocker, and a good receiver. 23-yard line where it is third down and 15. Green Collins setting up a screen and a fine, fine play by Matt Dyson. Number 91 leaped up and slapped it down. So Dyson makes a big play for the Wolverines on uh, third down and 15. They bring up fourth, and the kicking team is in for Penn State. Matt Dyson, 91, has been injured. He's had a calf and a knee, and you mentioned a big play. This is because the screen was set up. Watch 79 pick it right here as O'Neal. You saw 91. Dyson knocked that ball down. There was a two other linemen out there ready to go with the screen. Well, they really had that thing set. This will be a 40-yard try. And this one is good. Bayak missed from 25. This is good from 40. His previous long had been 32. And Penn State gets on the board to lead 3 to nothing. the band toodles away and we wait for the kickoff let's check in with Lynn Swan even though this is the first time these two teams have met they have a little bit of a common history you see back in 1961 and 69 Don Kenham tried to hire Joel Paterno met him in the Pittsburgh airport and after a conversation offered him the job Paterno thought about it and decided to stay here in Happy Valley but Don Kenham called him back and said Joe you know do you know anything about this guy named Bo Schimbeckler and after talking with, with Paterno, he said the only thing he knew about Paterno is that Woody Hayes said he was one of the best assistants he ever had. Bo Schimbeckler, of course, got the job, and the rest, they say, is history. Bo's here today. But there's a lot of folks from Michigan here today. First time that they had um, come to this part of the country to see a football game, obviously. And from what I could see on the faces I saw yesterday, they're having a good time. So they figure about a six-hour drive over? Something like that. Ann Arbor? Brett Conway will kick it off. Tyrone Wheatley and Derek Alexander will wait for it. And the ball rolls off the tee just before he hit it. So we'll do it again. We're expecting that when the crowd uh, total is announced today, we may have a new attendance record here at the Happy Valley, Beaver Stadium. Last year when we did the Miami game here, they put in more than 95,000. We think today they might get past 96 or something. Michigan, of course, leads the country in attendance in the stadium every year. This time they hold the ball, kick it well back into the end zone, and Tyrone Wheatley will leave it there, and it'll be first down Michigan at the 20. This is what's happening today in the Big Ten, and that one in Columbus is pretty good size. It's huge. 
Wisconsin a big surprise. Uh, what are they, 5 and 0 now? Yep. One of the things at the end of the season, though, that seems incredible. Well, how did you know what was going to happen was going to happen? But uh, Wisconsin and Michigan State end the season in Tokyo. <laughs> yeah. In the first week of December. And if that game has some kind of uh, bearing on the uh, final standings, I'm uh, not going. We will have you over there doing the game. <laughs> 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 yeah, by yourself. <laughs> Tyrone Wheatley is the single back. Collins gives it to him. And uh, Tyrone will pick up about six yards from the 20 to the 26 with a minute left to play in the first quarter. And uh, Penn State leading on a 40 yard field goal by Fayak, three to nothing. Well, the early reports for Michigan offensive line, we said the uh, key thing to watch the game store was that offensive line against the defensive line. They're opening some holes and giving uh, Collins some time to throw. So doing very well in the first quarter. Well, they had 33 yards total on 23 rushes against the Spartans. Uh, Tyrone Wheatley has six runs for 33 yards himself. And there's another four as he gets it up to the close to the 30 before Geltheiser brings it down. Maybe just a bit short of the 30 yard stripe, which will mean just short of the first down. So it looks like the Wolverines will let the clock run out, and the first quarter will come to a close with the Penn State Nifty Lions leading the Michigan Wolverines 3 0. And uh, 3 0 after one quarter of play in the first game ever between the two teams. T. Nelson and Coach Hayden Fry discuss the game plan. College football is a great game, but how do you handle the pressures, Coach? While you never lose sight of the record, your first responsibility must be to your players. But well, can you balance all that and still win? Success isn't always what's on the scoreboard. Sometimes it's what your players accomplish later in life. Well, that's a good point. Let's not forget that college football is about both college and football. Enjoy college football more than a game. Ryan Gelhazer leads the tacklers for Penn State with, with five in the ball game so far in the first quarter. But the Penn State uh, rush hasn't bothered Tom Collins much yet. Wheatley is the single back. Third down and short, and this time the Lions rise up. But the forward surge may have been just enough. Both linesmen came right down the 30 yard strike. 16 to the left is Geltheiser. Right there. Yeah. I mean, that's the. There's a look at Sandusky, the defensive coordinator. That's the gravy. The linebackers get to go over the top. The tough work was done by the defensive line and the offensive linemen piling everything up. And it is the first down. Weekly and Foster. He's back. Tom Collins calling his play at the line of scrimmage. Not a place to do that. Weekly. He's down at the line of scrimmage. Lou Benfati, number 55, works along the trenches, along with Tayoka Jackson and Eric Clare. Benfati is 6'3, 270, from Green Pond, New Jersey. And while you don't call his name very much, I can assure you that he is occupying the time and energy of two Wolverines <laughs> for virtually every play. He's making his 43rd start of his career today also. about the 38-yard line where Derek Bonner gets him by the coattail and brings him down. Here's a look at what happened in the first quarter. Uh, both teams had the ball twice. This Penn State with 16 plays to 14. Nothing really uh, uh, big difference in nowhere. 106 yards to 74. Time of possession about the same. No turnovers in Penn State with the one field goal and both of them had a miss. Uh, Defense is not playing too poorly. And offense is not getting it in the end zone. Third down, long two with Powers in the tailback slot. Now, Ricky Powers. Collins lets 
makes it go down the middle, has a man wide open. It's Toomer, and Amani Toomer is down to the Penn State 41-yard line, first down Michigan. Good protection for Todd Collins. Little play action on third and short. Middle of the field was wide open, and uh, Todd Collins throwing the ball very well and getting some nice time to throw by that offensive line. I think Sandusky is going to have to turn some blitzers loose here, isn't he? The down guys don't seem to be able to generate much pressure on him. Ed Davis is in the backfield. Deep man. He's the sophomore out of Detroit. Todd Collins lets it fly. Derek Alexander to the corner. No. Can't get there. Eric Clare knocked Todd Collins down, but the ball is long gone. It's a nice call, though, Keith. You're moving the ball. You're inside the 45-yard line of the defense. Uh, first down, play action. You throw long. Sometimes defenses don't expect you to throw the ball deep when you get across the 45, 40-yard line, inside the 30, because of the back of the end zone. They think you're not going to throw deep. So first down pass, go deep. Uh, stretch him out a little bit. You've been throwing underneath. Nice call. Todd Collins' first miss. Wheatley's back. Collins looks for him, throws instead down the middle, and the pass is incomplete. Must have been intended for Walter Smith. He was the only eligible in the neighborhood. Well, that was that wide receiver screen, Keith, and Gelsheiser, number 16, saw it coming all the way. Watch Gelsheiser. He's right here. Now as the lineman head out, Gelsheiser is going to head right that way also. And you'll see coming from the left side outside the picture, he sees it all the way. That could have been a nasty collision. The ball rests at the 41-yard line of Michigan, where it is third down and 10 for the Wolverines. Penn State leading in the ball game by a score of 3-0. And we have 12 and a half minutes to go in the first half. Goes underneath the pass complete to Smith. Breaks one tackle. Can't get away from the rest of it. That's Yaboa Cody, number 43. And one thing you can always say about a uh, Joe Paterno coach team is they can all they will always tackle well. He always has good people blocking and tackling. Never uh, go uh, beyond. I mean, they always got a lot of attention to blocking and tackling. You can talk about X's and O's and nickels and dimes and uh, spreads and all that other stuff, but they'll always be able to block and tackle here. All right, Chris Stapleton checks in. Number 10 is Bobby Ingram. You just saw he's waiting for the punt. And let's see if Stable can try to hit the corner with it. He sails it right on beyond the field to play. And often happens, the punter relaxes, tries to push it, gets it on the foot right, play it fly. He covers. How does Prism's 24-hour roadside assistance work anyway? Can I get anti-lock brakes? Are the dual airbags really standard? Before you buy a new car, you have a lot of questions. Call 1-800-GET-TO-KNOW and get to know all the answers about the new Geo Prism. How about if I just take this one? Than out in the open where it's so plain to see. If it's gonna get done, it's up to you and me. Come on and head for the mountains of Bush. Come on and head for the mountains of Bush. Beer. From Brussels to Budapest, Milan to Munich, Delta gives you more non-stops to more cities in Europe than any other airline in the world. 290 weekly flights. 21 countries. More Europe, more often. Nobody gives you more of Europe than Delta Airlines. The Los Angeles Raiders trying to climb up the AFC West. Head to the mountains for a mile-high showdown with the Denver Broncos on ABC's Monday Night Football. 
Each team possesses a leading uh, rusher, ball carrier, and this is what the two leading ball carriers for the respective teams have done so far in the game. See that Wheatley has had it uh, six times more than Carter. Four times more. Four times more, I'm sorry. Carter, 32. They all want to wear 32, don't they? At least most of them do. Goes back to the day Jim Brown made it so popular. This carry by Brian O'Neill, who is a senior from Cincinnati, and he'll pick up two yards on the carry. It'll be second down and eight. Cincinnati, he went to the same high school as Roger Staubach. Neil had some injuries earlier uh, this summer. Had a foot problem and a, had a disc in his back. He is a tough, he is a tough fullback. He doesn't get to carry the ball enough. He got three good tailbacks. <laughs> And they got three tailbacks and three fullbacks. Carey Collins. Ball bounces. Uh, Kyle Brady, is that a catch? Hit him on the knee, bounced up into his hands. Whatever it takes. And that'll be a first down for the Nittany Lions, and here's John. Keith, that was a lucky bounce. Here's a unlucky bounce. Graham Stroman looking for Derek Stiegel. He gets caught up with the official Rosario Amato, and Mike Martin picks it up. Look at Stiegel here, right over top of Amato. The ball is kicked right up into the arms of Martin. It led to a touchdown, 14-0. Keith. Boy, that'll send you to the supper table Monday morning. This is Kajana Carter carrying the ball. And the 212 pounder will pick up another Penn State first down. That's just a great run, Keith. Everything was boxed in, and he just took off with the sideline. He is second in the Big Ten in rushing and sixth in the nation, right there, averaging 122 yards per game. His quarterback helped him around the corner, too. He gave his body to a block. You know, this offense is without their starting quarterback at the beginning of the year and one of their top wide receivers, Tyson Thomas, injured a knee, a wide receiver, not here. Ball is handed inside. Here goes Carter. Crosses midfield and goes down to the Michigan 44-yard line. Another first down for Penn State. Well, we talked about talked about the inside linebackers. Another play inside. Watch right here as the tight end is going to come and get the block, and he's going to go inside, but right off the tight end's block. Brady 81. That's Powers 95. Good blocking. There's a lot of green grass and no white shirts on there for a minute, wasn't there? Yep. Eight carries, 92 yards. For Carter, he's got it again. He's still going. Oh. Four tackles. Four tackles. Yep. Of course, a guy like Carter, <laughs> he'll make you miss some tackles. Well, the history dictates here at Penn State that the home crowd fully understands and will lend uh, their appreciation loudly to the running backs because they watch them. They know what they can do, and they're watching a good one in Kajana Carter. Mike Archie is now in, and he, for the defense, he's no bargain either. He's 206 pounds and can run. Terry Collins goes to the corner. south of the nearest stoplight and two miles up in the rocky mountain sky you'll find skiers heaven also known as telluride the skiing's perfect and the views are even better and whether you're going to extremes or just going for a lesson don't go without your visa card because at telluride ski resort they'll let you take the plunge 
but they won't take American Express. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. We saw a boy get murdered tonight. If they catch us, they're gonna kill us too. This fall, there's one movie to see. Judgment Night, rated R. Now playing. Hitachi? They make, uh, those little chips. They're in everything. They make things run. Hitachi makes semiconductors and 20,000 other memorable products. Hitachi. The simpler my life is, the better. I don't need more stuff. I need good stuff. You sure don't need a car that costs as much as my parents' house. I think my car should be an ostentatious display of common sense. Everybody but George retired. They've been coming here for so long, they've all been named honorary coaches. Brett Conway will kick it off for Penn State as the Nittany Lions lead by a score of 10 to nothing with nine and a half minutes to play in the first half. This kid Conway, Keith, is a true freshman, taking some of the pressure off of Fayak, was the number two uh, kicker in the nation last year behind uh, Bentley at Florida State. They don't want Tyrone Wheatley to get it, but he's got it anyway. And they get him. And this is how it became a 10 to nothing ball game. From behind the uh, from behind the offense, it's a good call. As we mentioned, inside the 35, 40 yard line, the ball is a little bit underthrown. That's Ingram's eighth touchdown reception of the year. You know, Alfie Birch uh, kind of lost sight of the ball, turned the long way, and then couldn't get back to it. Ingram's putting uh, some new marks in the record book, as you see. He's only a sophomore, set out last year. So, Todd Collins lets it go to Derek Alexander. Dukes one, gets up across the 35, and that'll be a first. No, I don't think so. Not quite a first down. Later today on ABC Sports, the second half of our doubleheader. Now, these games are all big. I mean, Michigan State, Ohio State, that's big in the Big Ten. Tennessee, Alabama, you know about that in the SEC. Washington, UCLA, and the Pac-10, Colorado, Oklahoma, in the Big Eight. The winner of, uh, of any one of those games is going to be in pretty good shape in their conference. It is a first down for Michigan, and now we get a penalty flag. Can't be the clock. They still had 13 seconds remaining on the step clock. So here's Jim Kimberling to tell us what happened. Wolverines making another mistake. Here's a look at uh, Michigan in the Big Ten this year versus last year. You can see on the left side uh, they were total defense and rushing defense. The offense is down below. They led in all of those categories. And this year. Not quite as good. Of course, they lost their entire offensive line and Elvis Gerbach. And the defense has been hurting with all of those injuries to the inside linebackers. So it's been a little bit different uh, going this year for Gary Mullen. First and 15, the ball back near the 30-yard line. Let's it go. Got a man over there on the sidelines. The pass is completed up around the 38-yard line to Derek Alexander, the senior out of Detroit. Shelly Hammonds, cornerback, made the hit on in number 21. Shelly Hammonds was a running back when he first came here. Then he went to the defense, and he went back to the offense and wound up at defense, and he's a good one. Oh, he's an outstanding player. A couple of years ago against uh, Boston College, he gained over 200 yards in the second half alone. But he still wanted to play defense, and that's where he is. And he's an outstanding corner. We 
safely, the single back. He's got it. Lost when he made his cut, kind of lost his footing. Turned it back inside. Lee Rubin uh, had him in his sights, and uh, he slipped, and Rubin missed him, but he didn't get much of it. The top ten today. We're early, so they're not a lot of these games have started yet. But that's a look at the AP top ten. ABC Sports is pretty well represented in the top ten. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> well, a bunch of good ones. Third down and seven. Yes, today and October 30th are really two outstanding days of college football. Exceptional. Oh, day long. Time counts. Throws the ball finally to Tyrone Wheatley. He's taken down at the 45 by Willie Smith, an inside linebacker for Penn State. And I think he got him just a little short of his first down. But I'm I'm really impressed uh, by the way the Michigan offensive front has handled the Penn State defense. They have. Michigan uh, came in uh, allowing uh, a few sacks with Penn State. At 18 coming in. Yep. That's going to be just short. Michigan's got to punt it away again. Stapleton will be kicking to Bobby Ingram. Stapleton's two punts, 28 and 38. That's a good kick. It's high hanger. Ingram lets it go, and this time got burned. Ball is down inside the five. Sometimes it'll go in and sometimes it won't. Well, he did the right thing. 50 yard punt. Put in play from uh, right about the five. So let's call it the five yard line where the ball was screwed right in there and stuck just like a good well hit seven iron. Mike Archie and John Whitman will be the running backs for Penn State now on this snap. This is Be Careful Country. Penn State leading 10 to nothing. Collins gives it to Archie. He bangs his way into the middle and goes to the 10 at the five yard pickup. A little more than five. The other tailback for Penn State is Stephen Pitts. We haven't seen him yet. We will. One of the things Michigan likes to do, Keith, is slant their linemen. You can see it real well right here. Watch as the white shirts will slant to our left, the linebackers, and fill the holes. Nice block there by the fullback, Whitman. Penn State's ready for that slant. Archie again, trying to bounce outside and can't get away. Bobby Powers, a good play for the junior from River Ridge, Louisiana. Powers is an overachiever. He's an outstanding uh, young man. He's six foot, only 231 pounds, uh, 13 tackles last week against Michigan State, and he's one of those linebackers that are filling in on the inside in there for Michigan. Loss on the play to make it a third down and six now as O'Neill comes back into the backfield. He's a good pass receiver. Kerry Collins couldn't find anybody to throw to. Turns it upfield, runs it out of bounds, and was trying to get the ball to the 15, which is where he had to go for his first down. And Wolverine would not let him get there. Right. More than anything, Keith, that's a safe call when you're back up in your own end zone. Yep. Uh, you, you get outside. You're not going to get sacked in the end zone, first of all. And secondly, you get outside where you can see and, and not throw any interceptions. V.J. Musillo comes in, a junior from Long Branch, New Jersey. That number one you just saw dropping back is Derek Alexander. He's going to give Michigan very good field position if he handles the ball. Musillo's punt is out of there. Alexander takes it at the 48-yard line. Out of hold. He's gone. Touchdown, Michigan. Yard punt return by Derek Alexander and the Wolverines get a big play. Special teams. Both teams are very good at returning kicks. It's number 52. It's Smith, Willie, Willie Smith, Smith, the uh, linebacker. Backup linebacker for Penn State. 
Time out for Willis Smith, and let's check in with John Saunders. Keith, Syracuse and Pitt, we told you Marvin Graves was injured early back in the game. A little play fake there. Then 64 yards to Marvin Harrison, who was wide open. Pitt went for the fake. That made it 7-7. They've added another, now lead 14-7 in the second quarter. Keith, back to you. Well, Pitt's actually given them a ball game, aren't they? When Johnny Majors went to Pittsburgh the first time, the first turnout he had for his first class of recruiting, there was something like 170 kids. Now, that's only a dream of the past. You can't bring him in like that anymore. Johnny turned that thing around in a hurry over there before. Yep. Now it's going to take him some time. Yep. This is Elizabeth for the extra point and it's good well, he hooks that thing pretty well doesn't he he really snaps it sometimes but he got that one in at 5 14 to go in the first half it's now a 10 to 7 ball game Penn State let's go back and take a look from the end zone one of the best uh, routes is the most direct and that is straight up the field a good block there and he just got some space between the blue jerseys and if you got some space and a good runner like Alexander, he returned two kicks last year for touchdowns. Michigan, if there was a good block by 34, that's Charles. Not many other blocks were thrown. Most of them were just run by. Uh, the coverage ran by the kicker because he ran right back at him. Michigan needed a score. The momentum had shifted to Penn State. Derek's hair is going. Stays cool that way. <laughs> Remy Hamilton uh, will put it down on the tee now for Michigan. Shelly Hammonds and Kajana Carter are waiting. Kajana Carter has 99 yards so far in the ball game on nine carries, so he's going to have 100 before the halftime. As advertised, he is an outstanding player. Yep. Last time uh, Penn State had a punt return for a touchdown against them was Miami. Kevin Williams back in 91. Now let's see what Kelly Hammonds can do for the Lions. He almost had a crack himself. He's back to the 26 on the carry. And tonight on ABC, Billy Crystal and Meg Ryan ruin a wonderful friendship by falling in love. <laughs> when Harry met Sally, and then a drug dealer sells to kids the feds are protecting him, and it's all on the new commission. Tonight after the movie on ABC. They ruined a perfect friendship, huh? Yep. <laughs> Only in Hollywood. That's right where you neighborhood, isn't it? You hang around the neighborhood. No. <laughs> Kajana Carter. Nope. This is Kerry Collins down the middle. The pass to Ingram. First down, 40-yard line for Penn State. I'm impressed with both quarterbacks, both Collinses, both Carey and Todd Carey, starting uh, his third game of the year. Well, that was a rope, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Penn State only throws 30% of the time, and they have running plays the other 70%. Of course, the production is a little bit more balanced than that. But... O'Neill and Whitman, two fullbacks, are now in the backfield, and this is O'Neill, number 29, getting one of these rare carries up to the 45, about a four-yard pickup. And time remaining in the first half, 4:35, a 10-7 lead, Penn State. Kajana Carter coming back in now. Chip Lavarca leaves the game. At the flanker, they don't throw to Lavarca a whole lot, but when they do, it's usually big trouble. Let's see if they give it to Carter for 100 yards. Yep, here he goes. And he gets, no, he didn't get his 100 yards. He did not get a thing out of that carry as J Jared Irons and uh, Bobby Powers took him down. It's a nice play by Irons. Rivera is going to come around here. And Irons is going to be right here. It kind of gets stocked up in there. Little step to the right. Rivera, 54. The nose guy, Keith, the man you said would be key today, did a nice job of yep. pushing his man back into that hole. Jerry Collins throwing. 
incomplete intended for Kajana Carter up or around the 49-yard line. Shante Peoples, the man on the coverage for Michigan. And so Penn State will not get the first down and they'll have to punt it. So the Michigan defense played well that time. After that one rope was completed by Collins. Musillo's first kick was a 35-yarder, and Derek Alexander took it back 48 for a touchdown. And it's off the side of the foot. Alexander had no chance to get to the ball, but it takes a Penn State roll and it rolls all the way down to the 13-yard line. Nothing you can do about that if you're on offense except put two or three guys back. 43-yard punt, and coming up at halftime on the Prudential Halftime Report, John Saunders scores and highlights a look at the Heisman hopeful Tennessee quarterback, Heath Schuler. He's a, he's a fun youngster. He, yeah. I mean, that whole family is fun. I was impressed with Schuler, uh, not only when we did their game at uh, Florida, but also in seeing some of his other highlights uh, the last couple of weeks. Thirty-five yard line. So Tyrone Wheatley shows his heels to the Lions, and the Michigan Wolverines now have some real estate at their back. Good blocking, blocking up front. Wheatley gets around the end. Here's a rushing comparison by team. Penn State 115 yards, and Michigan 67. Although after we add that last one, be a little bit closer. Wheatley again. So they may sense here that it's uh, they've got a chance to make a move if they crank up the Wheatley engine and they've done that. He picked up six yards on that carry and it kind of reminds me of the old days when John McKay was at USC. Somebody said why do you give it to him uh, so many times and he said why it ain't heavy. <laughs> That's good. I'm told that that last that the run before that last one the long run by Wheatley was included. So only 67 yards over almost a half for Michigan. Second down on four and uh, Todd Collins getting some pressure. Penalty flag goes down. Number 94, Eric Rabati dragged the Michigan quarterback down. And let's see about the penalty. Man in the white hat is Jim Kimmerly. Michigan holding. So they continue to make mistakes that hurt them. And I'll guarantee you that big old baritone in the blue hat knows it. Mm -hmm. And other folks do too now. <laughs> well, you've got that right. Uh, the offensive tackles for Michigan uh, had their hands full blocking Ravati and uh, Tioka Jackson. They are two outstanding pass rushers. Michigan has not been sacked yet today, but they've been called for a couple of holding penalties. This is point of foul penalty, 17 yards on the call. So it's a big penalty. Two minutes and 23 seconds remaining in the first half. Walter Smith, Eric Alexander, Mercury Hayes, all of the burners are out there now. A wide out for Michigan. Give it inside to Wheatley, and I want to tell you there is a lick there. Kyoka Jackson meet Mr. Tyrone Wheatley. <laughs> 97 is uh, Jackson. Little game, a little twist. He came back to the inside expecting a pass. They were rushing the passer. And look what I found. A little draw play inside. He is a third in career sacks. Of Penn State is Jackson. He's a good one. Walter Smith. Collins looks both ways, comes back to Alexander. And Alexander doing some moves. He is out well short of the first down. Remember, they had a 17 yard penalty for holding. And that'll bring up fourth down and 12. 
gorgeous day now that the fog has been burned off with the bright sun colors glimmering from uh, the hillsides surrounding Happy Valley as the home team Penn State leads Michigan by 10 to 7. Hold on. I don't just Stapleton will be summoned now to punt for the Michigan Wolverines his fourth kick of the day as it's fourth down and 12 and Mike Archie has gone back Archie's first time back under a punt today. They're looking for the running back. They're looking to get some field position. Maybe back on another three pointer if they can. Maybe a block. Uh, maybe a block. They got nine of them up there. Now ten. They all go. But the kick is away, and it's a good one. That's a real good one. Oh, a great kick. It is in the end zone, however. That was almost an outstanding oh, kick, I want to tell you. Almost out at the one. Coffin corner winds up a 66-yarder, and it comes back to the 20, netting 46. But still a very good effort by Stapleton. They were after him, too. They had some pressure on him, and he got off an outstanding kick. Wind is blowing in that uh, direction some, but uh, that was a great kick. So now the Nittany Lions, we have one timeout remaining. Remember, they lost one on the crowd noise rule back early on in the first quarter. They have a minute and eight seconds of time. One timeout. Milne and Carter backfield. Jonna still needs one yard for 100 in the first half. Got the ball. Going around the corner, he's got his 100. He gets out of bounds at the seven yard line, so he's got 106 yards in the first half of play. Be second down and three. There's a look at the fullback, Brian Millen. He's had a tough, tough couple of years in high school. He was diagnosed with Hodgkin's disease. He gave him a 70% chance of surviving. He had two surgeries and six months of chemotherapy, which he said going through that was hell, but the doctors now say he's healthy. Carter found, trying to bounce outside, can't find any room there, so he just put his head down and turned away and got it down to the 29, so they'll be looking at third down and one. Six months after uh, Millen's treatment ended, uh, he won the high school state discus title. Paternal uh, said his scholarship was still there for him, kept in touch with him. Uh, and last spring, he won the NCAA discus championship, and now he is the backup fullback here at Penn State. Great story. Young man. Stephen Pitts is in the backfield for the first time today, making, uh, bringing a pair of fresh legs, but uh, O'Neill gets the ball, and uh, I guess he's going to have, according to the linesman's posture, where he puts his foot, they will have a first down. Put it on the 31-yard line and move the chains with 18 seconds remaining. So it looks like we may well go to the clubhouse for the three-point difference. And we'll see whether or not Kerry Collins elects. No, nope, they're going to let that clock run. They just wandered around out there and headed for the locker room. That's where we are at halftime. The Penn State Nittany Lions leading the Wolverines of Michigan. And now timeout has been called. Penn Most State of the Penn State was on the way to their clubhouse, but Michigan said, no, 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 let's wait. Sunday. Boxing. When a bunch Lions of... Lions back all on their sideline now, and uh, we're going to get this one last play, and we've got a new record in attendance at Beaver Stadium. The old record was 96,704 for the Miami game a year ago. Just barely squeezed by it. 96,719 today. So you and I have seen two of the, the larger crowds of the season. Yes, Michigan, yeah. Notre Dame, but not here. And we were included in that count, weren't we? we they count us and the players and the uh, coaches course. and everybody? Absolutely. I think Joe waited to call that timeout uh, just so he could get one more shot, and if it was a bad play, a fumble or a turnover, he wouldn't give Michigan any time to do anything. But you can bet he's got some guys that can do something with it. Carter, maybe, or Ingram, throw it deep. Well, he's got Ingram and LaBarca over here to the bottom of the picture together. Look out. Michigan says, now, we're having none of this. Buster Stanley 
puts him on his back, and the half is over. Now we'll give you the halftime score. Penn State 10 and Michigan 10. It up, Birch doesn't, and it's touchdown. That made it 10 to nothing. 40-yard field goal responsible for the other scoring. Now watch Derek Alexander go 48 yards with a punt for Michigan's touchdown. He did it gracefully. Amazing thing there, Keith, is there is nobody on the ground. Nobody was on the ground in a white shirt or a blue shirt. He just ran by everybody. That plus the field goal from Elizabeth, or rather from uh, Fayak as uh, the reason for the three-point difference in the ball game. Craig Fayak, the uh, Nittany Lions place kicker. The statistics after a half, a total yardage, 107 to 217. Thing that's not on there, of course, for Michigan is the punt return for a touchdown. Michigan has no offensive touchdowns. And for Penn State, they had the one long pass, the 37-yard touchdown. And other than that, it's been pretty much a defensive struggle. Number 32 is tailback Kajana Carter. Number 21 is cornerback Shelly Hammonds. They are the return men for Penn State as Remy Hamilton, number 19, redshirt freshman from Boca Raton, Florida, gets ready to kick it off for the white-shirted Michigan Wolverine. Record crowd of more than 96,000 watching on a sunny afternoon. And it's finally picked up by Hammond. And Hammond's now playing quarterback, former running back. Gets out to the 37-yard line where the Lions will go to work. In the first half, Kerry Collins was 7 of 13 and a touchdown. Carter had 108 yards, and Ingram had 53 yards on two receptions in that one touchdown. Possessions, they did well the first three times they had it. They missed a field goal and then kicked the field goal and a touchdown, and then they punted two times before the end of the half. Kerry Collins sets in at quarterback number 12. Kajana Carter is the deep back. He's got the ball going right, gets a hole, cuts it back, and he runs into number 37, Jarrett Iron. And he's down at about the 41-yard line. I remember that I went through the Notre Dame ball game and did not call Jared Irons' name in that ball game, and uh, Michigan lost. And now he is forced because of the linebacking core being wiped out by injuries and other reasons. He's got to play, and he's improving every week. They hand it inside, trying for their first down, trying to bust the crack in there. O'Neal could not pop out. So they'll be looking at third down at about five. Now let's check in with Lynn Swan. Well, Keith, going out of halftime, Joe Paterno felt like his offense just kind of fouled up some opportunities to score. But one interesting thing they are doing, they're trying to block the inside safety really fast because he's made most of the tackles. So sometimes the motion is designed to give the receiver an angle on the inside strong safety. Harry Collins throws the ball. Brian catches and goes down to the Michigan 41 yard line for a first down for Penn State. Michigan came into this ball game and into this season having won or shared five straight Big Ten conference titles. They've been to 18 straight bowl games and they need to win this ball game. Fullback's going to slide out here, Keith. Watch him as he's going to fake to the second man. The linebacker on that side is held by the play action fake. Nice play. They've worked that a couple of times and you know, you keep running it till they stop it. Put it on the 42 as Penn State has the first down. Give it to Carter. And they get him just a little short of the line of scrimmage. So Penn State, the independent, the beast of the East, if you will, for so many years among the Eastern independents, going into the Big Ten this year, their inaugural season, and they're undefeated in conference play. Whereas Michigan loses last week to Michigan State. And I was kind of, I wasn't entertained, frankly. I was a bit bewildered by the negativism of so many headlines around this part of the country. Despite two losses they've been writing, Michigan comes in this and that and what have you. Well, I got news for them. Michigan is Michigan. <laughs> and when they come to town, you better tend to your knitting or you're not going to handle it. That's for sure. Let's take, take a look at the game story. Let's update. Uh, What's been going on, we said uh, for Michigan, 
Can the offensive line control the defensive line? Well, they've got 71 yards in the first half, no sacks, and only two tackles for loss. Michigan, uh, for Penn State, they're rushing 124 yards in the first half. That is very good. Both teams seem to be doing uh, what they wanted in the game store. On third and ten, Kerry Collins lets it go, and it's just beyond the reach of Bobby Ingram. And you know what? He had it. He had it. Well, it would have had to have been a good throw. Uh, there was better coverage there than it was on the touchdown before, but you're right, he had a couple of steps. So they'll have to punt it. Musillo is in. Alexander will go back. Two punts. 135, 143. That 43 had a big roll on it. So it'll come to the 20, and Michigan will have their first possession of the second half. And at 10 to 7, that's the net line schedule up to this point, where they went 5 and 0. These are the people they are yet to play. Now they had one winning record on those teams in the first half of the season, Rutgers. In the second half of the season, they're going to be looking at four winning records, and Ohio State's next, but they have a week off before. Now, the Michigan schedule through the first half, it, it's about the same, frankly, as uh, the uh, Penn State schedule. But the second half, like theirs, will also get a little nuttier. And Illinois is next. Of course, the, the one big team on Michigan's schedule was Notre Dame. That, well, they ranked uh, third or fourth in the country now, aren't they? Yep. Michigan 3-2 and two coming into this game. Penn State is 5-0. Oh, and The Wolverines go to the attack for the 20. And the ball to Tyrone Wheatley, and he's got about six yards on the chair. Penn State does not play Wisconsin. If you missed the Badgers' name and that future alignment for them. And they finish the season at Michigan State, which couldn't be a bump in the road. But their first problem right now is to win this game. Michigan Wolverines laden with history. You know, they played in the very first collegiate bowl game back in 1902, the Rose Bowl, fielding Yost's. Lad uh, defeated uh, Stanford 49 to nothing, and that was what set in motion ostrich racing and chariot racing and all of that. Rob Holmberg is the man hurt. Terry Killens comes in to replace him. Hand off to Tyrone Wheatley, and Wheatley is stopped just short of the 30-yard line. Now here's Lynn Swan with a report on Michigan's halftime message. Keith, I talked to Cam Cameron, the offensive coordinator. He said, of course, they want to stop the penalties. They said they need better blocking from the right side of their offensive line. And the only thing that Penn State's doing that they had not anticipated was a nickel defense with that fifth defensive back floating in the middle. On the defensive side, they feel like they just need to tackle better, but they are feeling the pressure of Penn State going after their inside linebackers. All right, Swanee, that's Derek Bonner down on the field, shaken up on the last play. It would appear that he one of, none of his appendages are damaged, though he's, he's pointing to his right ankle. So apparently that's the problem. Let's take a look at the first half offensive leaders for Michigan. Todd Collins played well, 99 yards. Uh, Wheatley ran for 72. Alexander had four catches for 48 yards. Alexander had the punt return for the touchdown in the first half possessions. They had five of them. Uh, they really didn't do a lot after the first possession of ten plays. As I mentioned, the touchdown that Michigan had was a punt return by Derek Alexander. Derek Bonner is walking off the field. Four-year starter. Tough guy. Yeah, he is a good football player. First and ten for the Michigan Wolverines. The ball is placed on the 30-yard line. Todd Collins. Hands to Wheatley. And Wheatley will have five. Ioka Jackson, most of that tackle. You can see Wheatley expressing himself walking back to the huddle. Looking for some fire. He, well, after it's been a little flat. After last week when he played uh, Michigan State with that stunt 4-3 of George Perlis, uh, he only gained uh, 33 yards all day. Today he's got some running room and he's pretty excited about it. Second down, five. We 
Wheatley again. Outside. There's the first down at the 43 yard, 44 yard line. Cliff Dingle making the tackle for Penn State. He's on the field in place of uh, Derek Bonner. Number 46 we just saw there a moment ago. Another great story for Penn State. Marlon Forbes, the walk on. Yeah. And uh, by golly, he, he was on a Navy ROTC scholarship. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Kept at it and finally got the starting job. Cornerback. On first down, Todd Collins throw pass caught by John Ritchie, the fullback. And Ritchie will get a first down at the 43 yard line of Penn State. Bill Yavor Cody brought it down. He's the junior from Montreal. Take a look at Penn State defensively in the Big Ten. They lead the the uh, defensive categories, uh, six out of seven of the total defensive categories, they are number one. So this drive of Michigan going against a very good Penn State defense. Bob Holmberg back. Ricky Powers, the deep man. And the offensive line surge with Powers carrying is pretty good. The offensive front for Michigan has played quite well today. Thank you. Number 40 you see there, John Ritchie, the fullback from Michigan. He's uh, from Pennsylvania right around here. As you take a look at Tioka, number 97 right there, Jackson. Plays off of Jenkins, number 97. The thing about it, Keith, even when Penn State is making a play, they're still falling forward for two and three yards. Todd Collins, 11 of 13 for 112 yards. He's hit six in a row for Michigan. Wheatley. And uh, this time it's uh, Ricky Powers, excuse me, and Tioka Jackson one more time. Tioka is from Forestville, Maryland. And uh, as we said early in the first half, a very good defensive football player. 6'2", 265 pounds. Well, Jackson is a defensive end, and sometimes uh, colleges will list these guys as defensive tackles or nose tackles and I think it just sounds better to him. He asked us to say, now be sure you list me as a defensive end. Because <laughs> a defensive tackle sometimes sounds like a big guy that can't move, you know, doesn't get any sacks. Tioka is a defensive end that rushes the pass. Ricky Power. And Gelsheiser makes the tackle on him. But Ricky Powers has a pretty good gain on that play all the way down to the Lions 29 yard line of the Wolverines may have something going here. Well, we say he's a pass rusher. He gets upfield here. Terzell Jenkins, 97, just takes him out. The play went inside of him. Of course, his responsibility on that play was containment, and he certainly did turn the thing in. It's a linebacker's job to tackle, make the tackle inside. Powers again never really got started. Sort of stumbled before he got to the line of scrimmage. We'll pick up maybe three yards on the carry. And the Michigan offensive line doing a very good job in this possession against the uh, Penn State defense. Correct, Keith. Uh, doing a nice job. Uh, Runyon, 69. 57 is Miller. Melia, the center, number 67, has been out the last two weeks with an injury, and having him back uh, makes a big difference in the line calls. The center makes all of the calls and checkoffs at the line. Dave Foster, the single back, has the ball. They doesn't get it all that many times, but he punches inside the 24. Derek Bonner has not returned to the lineup as yet at cornerback for Penn State after the ankle injury. Standing, however, on the sideline. There's a look at Gelsheiser, number 16, the inside linebacker. He was a quarterback in high school. That's why he's got that number, 16, but he is a linebacker. Brings back memories of Jim Kelly. When he came out of uh, high school in Pennsylvania, they wanted to make him a linebacker. Third, third and five, and Tyrone Wheatley back in there at the single back. Todd Cullen. Pressure coming backside. Ball is knocked loose, and they're going to call it an incomplete forward pass. Woo, that's close. Eric Ramonti, number 94, got his man that time. 
Rabati comes around the outside. And they changed this rule a couple of years ago that if there is any doubt as to whether the arm was coming forward or whether it wasn't, that it was going to be a, an incomplete pass. Well, the home folks are hooting and hollering about it. Sort of reminds me of that time when uh, uh, Paul McDonald left-handed one into the chest of uh, Western Notre Dame. I defended the official that made the call, and they almost hung me in South Bend. <laughs> This is man-sized, 41 yards for Elizabeth. The holder is Remersmaugh, quarterback. Into some wind, too. Wind's in his face, penalty flag is down, low line drive kick is no good. Let's see about the penalty. Going to be against Penn State. It was fourth and five. Offside against Penn State. There's a look at the breeze. Pretty good breeze. It's going mostly. Well, it's quartering, but it's uh, coming. Well, if anything, it's coming at the kicker. Question is, is that enough for a first, first down? down? A look at the bottom of your screen, Penn State. tell you if that is a first down that is a that's like a turnover right there it certainly is it is a first down critical mistake right there I think it was Hammonds uh, was trying to come in and get some pressure well in the last two weeks the turtles troops have blocked two kicks and they have led to 10 points so that time they just got a little anxious so Wheatley is a single back as Michigan this is the field goal try. Gets an offside penalty against Penn State to get a first down out of it. The ball is near the 18-yard line. They are not happy in Happy Valley. Wheatley is caught behind the line of scrimmage and down at the 20. Lou Benfati made the tackle. The game's next week on ABC's College football, Illinois, Michigan, and Fresno State, BYU. That's Big Ten and WAC. Then we will have other regional coverage for you. Some other games that will be announced on Monday. What's happening? What's happening here, Keith, is uh, Collins is checking off a great deal on running plays. Direction right or left. You can see him there turning around. Maybe. But down in this end, the noise is really bothering him. Second down, at least 11. This is Wheatley. And they stop him at the 16. So they'll be looking at third and about eight. I think with uh, Jenkins in the ball game, number 77, Trezell Jenkins, uh, the Michigan offensive front may be functioning just a little bit better. Of course, they've got Melia back this week, too. Rod Payne had to step in there last week. I think Melia back at center is making a big difference yep. as far as the line calls. Eric Bonner comes back into the ball game at his corner spot now. And he's got to get over there and play on the field side with his little ankle. And a double wide on that side right now. And Collins is looking that way. Todd Collins lets it go, and it is. Touchdown. Touchdown. Mercury Hayes. Couldn't tell if he was in or if he was out. Man over there in the striped shirt said he was in. Well, here he is here. He's going to go down and run to the corner. And I think the man that you were just talking about, Bonna, is right here. And he's going to get beat to the corner. The outside man runs a little out to occupy the corner. The slot man, Hayes, runs an out pattern. That is Bonna, number 35, who just came back in after that uh, ankle injury. Elizabeth is in for the point. And it's good. And the Michigan Wolverines, for the first time today, go to the lead by a score of 14 to 10. They go 80 yards in 14 plays. But they had a huge penalty break called against Penn State, an offside that gave them the life on the first down. The scoring 
drive you see there, but as we noted, the biggest play in that drive really was that fourth and five offside call on Penn State. And I think if you go back and look at your tape, you'll find that Shelly Hammonds was offside. That was a good call, there's no doubt about it, but Penn State had stopped him. And it's like a turnover, like we said. That was an 80-yard drive, first drive of the second half for Michigan. And they had missed the field goal drive. Oh, yes. Yeah. That's big. So Michigan leads, 14 to 10. Hamilton kicks it off. Hamilton and Carter wait for it. Oh, liner under the wind into the end zone. No return on that one. Here's another look at the touchdown. Hayes is number nine, the inside receiver. Outside receiver is going to break out just to occupy the outside corner. Bonner, number 35, is just out of, this, out of the picture to the right side right there. Ball's thrown a little late. It could have been there sooner. Nice catch. Fischel is there. Fischel is there doing his job. There's another look at it. There's the short receiver breaking out to occupy Forbes, number 46. Ball is thrown to the deep man. Is he in? Yep. Look at that. Nice call by the official. Knee was down and Pretty close pos possession of the ball. Yep. Yeah, this is Kajana Carter for uh, Penn State. And uh, Michigan gets him at about the 26-yard line. So give Kajana six yards on that carry. Lions trying to fight back now. Down 14 to 10 with five minutes and 20 seconds. Play in the third quarter. Keith Jackson, Bob Greasy, and Lynn Swan. This here telecast. And if you wonder why Joe might have some gray hairs, it's because of that last series. He had them stopped. They were going to go for the field goal. They missed the field goal. He jumps off sides, and then they get the touch out of him. Carter hit behind the line of scrimmage. Turns it up for a couple of yards. And college football on ABC Sports, brought to you by... Chevrolet trucks, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. And the light beer with the great imported taste. Amstel Light. Right. Put Mike Archie in the backfield now, number two. Good receiver, Archie. Terry Collins lets it go. Archie catches. Reese is right in the playbook again. Chuck Winter shoves him out of bounds. There's a look at Lloyd Carr, defensive coordinator for University of Michigan. He's uh, been trying everything this year to hold this defense together. As we mentioned, if you weren't with us at the beginning, five inside linebackers are hurt and out, including Steve Morrison, the leading tackler from last year and also this year before he was injured. Freddie Scott, who comes from Southfield, Michigan, number 31, is in as a wideout, bottom of the picture. And Collins back, looks for him, and lets it go. And he's got a chance at it to Benedict Lang. All against number 22, Ty Law. Ty reached over, grabbed a hold of it. So the one that left home to play football at Penn State. Is involved in a big play for the Nittany Lions. But single coverage again. Michigan trying to stop the run with 10. You got a lot of one-on-one -on -one situations. Can't tell from there what the interference on the defense. 15 yards from the previous spot. First down. You know, the only thing that you might uh, see there is the. Uh, well, you can't see the left hand. I don't know where the left hand is. The left hand is is not on him. Well, it was earlier. It was earlier. He had him now, before that. From those shots that we yeah. saw, it was hard to see if there was anything there, but uh, doesn't matter. Too late now, but every time they throw wide, they're getting one-on-one. -on -one. Rolls out, lets it go again. Got a man wide open is tied in Kyle Brady. And Brady makes his second catch of the ball game down at the 31-yard line for a first down. <laughs> So the pass interference call, 15-yard penalty on that. Now the completion to Brady. And the Nittany Lions are trying to respond to the Michigan touchdown. Fran Ganner there on the left, the offensive coordinator. Joe will let him call the plays for a while, and then he'll say, well, let me let me take it over for a while. So you look at Florida out in front of, of Bowden. Not Bobby, <laughs> Terry. Terry. <laughs> 
He'll get, he'll get Bobby later on in the year. Both those guys undefeated. Though. This is Brian O'Neill, the fullback. And that's a loss on the play as Jarrett Irons, number 37, and uh, Trevor Price, number 8, make the tackle. Tomorrow night on ABC, America's Funniest Hour, starting at 7, 6 Central Time. Then we'll see Superman, see whether or not he's met his match on Lois and Clark, the new adventures of Superman, and fall in love all over again. Julia Roberts and Richard Gere, Pretty Woman, Sunday night movie, tomorrow on ABC. And second down and 10. Collins better hurry. Ball is batted around, and it is incomplete and almost intercepted, and away we go to John Tonga. Keith, you know Michigan and Penn State have their eyes on the Rose Bowl. How about Wisconsin? Daryl Bevel, 19 yards to Mark Montgomery. They lead Purdue 28-0. Bevel's 12th touchdown pass of the year, and they're undefeated. Keith. Ah, uh, but that's some uh, tough guys coming down the highway in the near future. Mike Archie and Brian O'Neill. And Collins running and lets it fly, and it was late. Penalty flag hit out of bounds. Ty Law has hit Jeff LaBarca out of bounds, and I think they're going to get a personal foul call. It looked to me like to be a very good call, too, like Law hit him before the ball even got there. So Ty Law now has been flagged twice in this Penn State possession, and they've both been big plays. Look from behind the quarterback. That's Price, number eight, putting some pressure. Well, I couldn't really tell from that. Pass interference on the defense, spot foul, first down. The official that called that play was probably the same one that made the call down in the end zone for the touchdown permission. I'm not sure about that, but he won't get a Christmas card from Ty Law. First down at the 22. This is Archie. Started again, and that second start got him about four yards. A total of about six on the carry. Let's go back and take a look. See if we can see anything differently. That's yeah, still. It's really hard to tell. We didn't see the whole thing. The official was there. Second down, call it five. Archie. First down. Good tough run by Mike Archie. Down to the 11 yard line. Michigan man shaken up. One of the defenders on that corner took a couple of hits and he's still down. That's people, it looks like. Take a look at the offensive line for Stan uh, for uh, Penn State. That's the 81. Is Brady blocking on Stanley? O'Neal out there, the fullback. Nice block by Brady. He's a 256 pounds at 6'6. Blocking on Stanley, who's about uh, 283. And the tight end won that one. How would you like to have a tight end weighing 256? At the conclusion of the ball game today, as we have been doing for a quarter century, the Chevrolet most valuable players will be chosen from each team with each university, getting $1,000 from Chevrolet for its general scholarship fund. Time remaining in the third quarter, 2.24. Timeout for the injured player, and it's a 14-10 Michigan lead. Before you buy a new car, Consider the comfort, consider the quiet, consider the power, consider the fit and the finish. But most importantly, before you buy a new car, consider these options. The Chevy S-Series, so new from the inside out, everything else is history. You know, if life were perfect, Women wouldn't talk during the bottom of the night. Yeah, and magazines would never smell like perfume. No, 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 no. See, if, if life were perfect, potato chips would cure hair loss. Dogs would walk themselves. And algebra 
It would actually come in hand. Well, hey, Easter Zamp still light. It's only 95 calories. Yeah, but it still has that real imported taste. Nothing's missing. Amstel Light is a great beer. Look, if life were perfect, if you'd buy the next round. All right, all right, I'm buying. You got a camera? You probably have a good idea of what to do with old tires. But when you need new ones, no matter what you drive, it's a good idea to go to Pep Boys. They'll help you choose from a huge selection. Michelin, Uniroyal, BF Goodrich, and Cornell. And have you on your way in under an hour with a low price guarantee. So for tires that'll give you a lot of miles and then some, come to Pep Boys and drive away happy. The injury is to Matt Dyson, number 91. And the problem is, his own teammate is going to come from the left side as this play develops and roll right into him. That's Henderson, 79. And those types of things uh, are just going to happen sometimes in football. You just They just can't be avoided. He's walking off gingerly, but uh, he's had problems all year, and he is one of their best players. He was an all-Big Ten player last year. That's a big loss for him to lose him. Oh, yeah. They, they've lost those five inside linebackers. Well, and now Steve Morrison, Marcus Walker, Dave DeBrett, Greg McComas, and Nate Holden all gone. Yeah. Not bad. And it's first down, Penn State, first and ten. The ball is on the 11-yard line. Penn State, Mike Archie with the ball. Breaks the corner to the goal line, but not in. Just short. When you have three high-quality tailbacks come get down to this point of the game, they show up. You saw the conversation on the other side. Paternal's talking to uh, Gander and just saying, now listen, just don't do anything fancy. Just run it in. If even it takes two or three plays, we got a first down. Don't take any chances. Easy handoffs. We just want the touchdown. <laughs> oh, yes. So it's Brian O'Neill and Brian Milne. Two fullbacks with Archie at the tailback in the lineup. And timeout. O'Neill and Ta and uh, Kerry Collins were not on the same page. And Collins called a timeout. Sometimes part of the problem is on the bench over there getting the play in too slowly or sending the uh, substitutes in and then by the time you get out there and get the line get up to the line of scrimmage you don't have that much time so in deciding which play or which personnel you use up all the clock one thirty nine left to play in the third quarter Penn State with a threat here sitting just inches away from the Michigan goal line. these are games that offers the ticket to the Rose Bowl and the games as they come along you see that uh, on October 30 Penn State and Ohio State and Columbus on the same day Arizona and UCLA that game could become enormous in the Pac-10 and of course Michigan Wisconsin with the Badgers undefeated and then the 6th of November at Madison Ohio State goes calling against Wisconsin those yellow numbers on there are the rankings of the teams Arizona does not play Washington this season. Washington UCLA game is coming up later on some of your ABC stations and on pay-per-view in some areas of the country. All right. Penn State trying to regain the lead in this ball game. Collins on the quarterback sneak. He almost, he almost didn't get that ball, Keith. Right. Sure looked like he was reaching for it. And I've said it before. What happens is the center ducks his rear end to go block. And the quarterback does a double take. Michigan defensive line. Good surge there. This is all you want to do. Straight ahead. Especially if it's first and goal on the one. You can do this again and give it to one of the backs straight ahead. He didn't make it. No, he's not moving anybody in there. Nope. You know, the 
this is good tough football and this is what you expect from a guy that's been uh, at the same school it's a time for the big uglies boy yeah. I mean, this if there was ever time. if there was ever a big ugly game this is it <laughs> down in the trenches the old paint swapping <laughs> you got some paint swapping on those helmets look at that yes sir John Carter is in the lineup now why didn't they give it to Mike Archie on the first down he's the one to put him down there they didn't now it's Carter over the top. Now what do you do? He's not in there either. There's no question. You go for it on fourth, huh? I would. Although, although you haven't been close. I don't, I don't have to be the loser either. <laughs> Michigan's all pumped now. You go for it on fourth. If you don't make it, at least you leave them down there on the one-foot line. But I think this time I'd try something on the corner. I think I might have started. I wouldn't pull anybody, but I'd try something on the corner. I John wouldn't. Whitman comes in now. He's the block, the better blocker of the fullbacks. We run out of time in the third quarter. So we'll delay this drama for just a moment. Be back after this message to work from our ABC station. Ben and Connie Studebaker look at things differently since they became parents. I'm Roger Cool. I'm their state farm agent. Having a family brought a lot of changes in their lives, so we thought it was a good idea to sit down and have a family insurance checkup. We started by adding to their life insurance protection. Then we went over all their family insurance to help make sure their coverage was up to date. After all, you never know what could happen. And like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Yeah, this is nice. <laughs> like the seats. Lots of room, that's good. Whoa, lots of room back there, too. Right smooth, real smooth. Ah, they must have fixed this road. Chevy, the most dependable, longest lasting trucks on the road. Like Even when it's just barely a road at all. Like Is an amnesia victim marked for murder? <gasps> you suspect it, we don't know it. Or a Walter and Gwen missing the boat? No! Moon over Miami Wednesday. Presenting the Central Florida brand of GMC quality and value. All new for 94. Like GMC's new four-door Jimmy. Only $2.99 a month. Beauty more than 10 D. Safe, secure, truck tough, car comfortable. Only $2.99 a month. A sizzling deal. And it bears the Central Florida brand of quality and value. So come by with confidence at these GMC truck dealers. Dear Midas customers, we don't want your family riding around on bad brakes. That's why we'll fix the brakes on most cars the same day you bring it in. No payments next month or 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 next month. Buy a semi Nissan this week with no payments till next year. The Highlight Zone, tonight following Channel 9's Eyewitness News at 11. Well, if you're from the old school, and you come up the tough way, the hard way, you run the two plays inside with a quarterback sneak. I think that's right. Then you try and send the, the, the tail back over the top. I think that was the right call. And now, I think you go off the corner. You either, you either roll your quarterback out. Dyson is back in, which is good news for Michigan. You roll your quarterback out to the wide side, which is left, and you got a right-handed quarterback. Or you give it to your tailback off the corner. But you don't pull anybody out of the line because defensive men will run through. Well, the ball was six inches away from the goal line. It is now a full yard away from the goal line. And you've got Brian O'Neill lined up with Brian Milton and Kajana Carter. Left tackle, right tackle. Carter in the middle, didn't make it. Great defense. Did not make it. Outstanding defense. The Michigan defense would not yield a defense that 
has been kicked around a goodly bit this year, but this time their metal was tested and they were equal to the challenge. 94 is Horn. He's going to get in there. Nobody's going to block him. Right there, the man in the, in the secondary took the, took the fullback out. Right here, this man is going to come in, and nobody is going to block him. Watch to the right side of your screen. He just runs around the block. It's Stanley and Horn just to the right of your screen now. They were slanting. Michigan was slanting to the outside, and they guessed right. The referee, Jim Kimbling, has just thrown the flag. The clock never moved. Illegal substitution. 12 men on the field. Half the distance. That doesn't mean much. The clock never moved on that uh, fourth down uh, play. It still shows 15 minutes on the game. This is still a critical time right here now. I mean, Penn State still has, it's where the ball is, and you got them on the one-yard line. Michigan needs to do something to get this ball out of there. And it's not the one-yard line. It's less than that. It's like just virtually touching the goal line after the penalty. They got to take some time here to adjust the clock because it had to use some time on that uh, fourth down play. Penn State had 13 plays, no points. And the Michigan defense is really jacked right Keith, now. Let's take a look at this. Here are the two inside tackles. Now let me show you what they're going to do. They're going to slant to the outside. All the defensive men are going to slant outside, and the two linebackers are going to step up in the inside. Now what that does is, if you're trying to run the ball here, everybody's slanting to the outside, you miss half your blocks. So Lloyd Carr, defensive coordinator, was guessing they weren't going to run the quarterback sneak up the middle. If they would have run the ball up the middle before the linebackers got there, the quarterback would have been in. But that's what you guess on the out. You, you pinch some and you slant them out some. And that time he guessed right. So they've run off uh, three seconds on the clock. It is now 10-7. That game is being played at Auburn. Florida leading by three. Kansas State undefeated. Oh, undefeated yeah. All right, now we go. Todd Collins gives the ball to John Ritchie. And he may be out near the one-yard line. And he is a true freshman, and he is uh, from right around here. Yeah, mechanics Yeah, he was um, recruited very heavily by Penn State, has some bunch of family and friends he said he didn't expect them to be rooting for <laughs> Michigan State but I mean Michigan but Penn State was one of the schools he visited Penn State wants to hold him down here at worst force him to punt and he slams out to the three so it'll be third down about eight and uh, Wheatley now on 21 carries has 101 yards Ryan Monahan made that last tackle senior from Wexford VA number 36 oh, it's actually closer to the two isn't it? real estate through the middle has become very precious to us it has this is key down here Penn State can stop them and force them to punt Give it a weekly. That's it back. And they do stop it. Just barely, but they stop it. Lee Rubin, the free safety, number 39. Let's pause a second and look at the numbers after three quarters. Pretty much the same. Penn State has eight more plays, 51 to 43, and a few more yards. No turnovers in the game, and the time of possession pretty much the same. Michigan punting team coming in. Stapleton has 
Caught it four times today. The last one was 66 yards. And that is his career long. And I mentioned Penn State has blocked two kicks in the last two weeks, two games. Bobby Ingram is waiting. The wind is at the back. Went for the return. No block. Didn't get all of it. Ingram midfield. Pretty good coverage. Bobby gets back to the 39-yard line. 40-yard punt, 11-yard return. Now Penn State try again to regain the lead. We were sitting around one day at the seed lab. We were local. Honda called me up. They were looking for somebody who had an established business to uh, assemble some speakers. This is where it started. And now we're 40,000 square feet. We send over 6,000 speakers a day to Honda, where they're installed in the 1994 Accord. In fact, it's really fun to look at the back of a Honda and, and say, hey, there, there's our speakers. Honda, homegrown in Marysville, Ohio. For the first time, there's a saw that combines a 12-amp motor, dust collection, and an auto brake. So there's no limit to what you can build. Introducing the Quantum Circular Saw, new from Black & Decker. And now for some thin, different, new domino. Take a look at the quarterback comparison. Both the Collinses, uh, Todd on the left from Michigan, is 12 of 15 and 128 in a touchdown. Carey, 10 of 19 and 140. Pretty similar results. On first and ten, Terry Collins rolls out. He's got some people coming after him, and they chase him out of bounds. Just about the line of scrimmage, Bobby Powers would have none of it. He Powers was right on his heels the whole time. And it'll bring up second down. To look at Bobby Powers. What has Michigan done here in the second half to shut down the Penn State running inside? Well, Powers is playing better. Stepped up, right? And Irons, the other inside linebacker, is uh, has ten tackles on the day so the the, uh, the alleged weakness of Michigan has not it's gotten stronger the game has gone on because of irons and power stepping in and throwing it this time throw it to Brady the tight end pick up is about six yards on the quick pop Shante Peoples takes him down strong safety normally you'll find the strong safety shadowing the tight end. Well, Keith, one of the other things you do is you blitz this linebacker. That was the, li the, the linebacker, and he's going to pop the tight end right in the area where the uh, linebacker, I think it was Powers this yep. time, and uh, Brady saw him blitz, so did Collins, and he popped him in the open area. Mike Archie is in the backfield now. He's the man in motion. Throwing in this series, that was all his caught by He's got a first down. Only the dancing feet of Ingram carried him for the sufficient yardage to move the team. He was in traffic. That's the wide receiver screen with the lineman. He dunked in behind the lineman. But Keith, this is really... A, 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 take a look from, from behind. Watch the lineman on the left side. Pick at 79. They all going downfield. Now look, whoa! He just dodge that defensive lineman that was coming back and so they move the chains and on first down this is Mike Archie and Archie with another good tough run of about eight or nine yards puts it inside the 20 at the 17 this drive is really a continuation of the one that got stopped yep. a few minutes ago Absolutely. because Penn State defensively stopped Michigan on three downs forced them to punt it. They took over on the 39-yard line of Michigan. Now they're just picking this drive up again. I tell you what, though, I declare I keep using Mike Archie. Well, he has the fresh legs. I think uh, Carter in the first half uh, kind of ran out of gas because uh, he ran so much. Look at this. That's Bobby Powers having to come off the field now. He's been very, very big in the second and third quarters at that inside linebacker position. He didn't want to come off. He's got 10 tackles. And there's Mike Archie. He's got it again. This time, Jason Horn searches him out and brings him down. And he did not permit the first down. So it'll be third and about 
Oh, that's at least a yard, almost a yard and a half. is next for Alabama too. Yeah. Third down, at least one. Archie, first down. At the 14 yard line. He's a pounder. We give credit to the uh, offensive line, uh, Hardings and Rivera. On the strong side of that line, number 50, as you see there, is Hardings, Powers. really the center. Powers has had to come out again. Van de Beek is in. This is Archie to the 10, and inside the 10. So he picks up the better part of five yards on that carry. Sometimes, Keith, it's easier as you take a look at Penn State rushing. Carter is 120, Archie now has picked up 42, a lot of that. But sometimes when you get inside the 20, it's easier to score the further away from the goal line that you are. So when you get closer, the uh, choices are a lot uh, shorter. That's Milne carrying the ball there, and not much for him. He bangs into the middle and then surges to the left and trying to ride uh, behind uh, Rivera and Hartings. The ball is put now at the eight-yard line. They've got to go inside the four to get a first down. So they need the, at least four yards. Some of that offensive, those offensive linemen, Hardings and Rivera, Malinowski. Archie and Milne lined up behind Kerry Collins. That's got in motion. Pressure coming in there, gets it away. And no flag in the end zone. Ingram is tangled up with Burt, and Ingram is screaming, and no call, and it's fourth down. He was lucky to get this ball away as a blitz. The two men on the lower left are coming in, but watch Ingram and Birch. You can face guard in college. You certainly can. No foul there. Nice catch. Nice no call by the official. 25-yard field goal try. Fayak missed from 25 in the first quarter. Made from 40. This one is good. Penn State can't get the touchdown, but they close to one. It is now 14-13 with 8.51 to play. Craig Fayak, a senior from Bell Vernon, Pennsylvania, needs just three points to tie Lydell Mitchell as the all-time Penn State scorer. And he is this week's Honda Scholar Athlete. Brought to you by American Honda in its sixth season. Proud to support amateur athletics. Fayak, 352 GPA in English. Honda presenting a check of $3,000 to the General Scholarship Fund of Penn State University. And if you need a disaster quarterback, Mr. Fayak can do that. He was uh, talking with uh, Fran Ganner earlier in the week. He said he could play quarterback for us. So can Musillo. He worked out some. The punter? Spring. Yeah, both of them. 35-yard line for the kickoff. Alexander's number one. He returned the punt for a touchdown earlier today. 14-13, to Michigan leading. And that kick will go out of bounds. And it'll come up to the 35. Michigan will have the ball. Now here, let's go to John Saunders for an update on an injury, a big injury. Keith, they need the mash unit. Produce Matt Pike out of the game with a broken collarbone. Wisconsin's Daryl Bevel who has four touchdown passes in the game. He's been taken to the hospital. A severe sprain on his ankle. We'll try and keep you updated. Wisconsin in command, 35 to seven is the lead in the third quarter. Keith. But the Badgers need him. They sure do. Uh, been one of the real surprises. Been a lot of surprises in the Big Ten this year with Michigan State being there. Indiana's doing well. Wisconsin 
Shea Foster and Taiwan Wheatley line up now in the backfield for Michigan, leading by one point, 14-13. And they start this possession from their own 35-yard line, and Wheatley carries. Good blocking on the corner. And Wheatley's across the 40, and they'll get him up to about the 43. This is the best starting point for a Michigan possession today. Whoa! 14 to 10 Auburn. Auburn. Auburn has really had a, uh, a weak schedule, but uh, nothing weak about Florida. Can't see them, though. They're on probation. They elected to take their penalty this year. No TV. Probably go 11 and 0. Uh, <laughs> 10 and 0. 10 and 1. Almost contact along the line of scrimmage. And Wheatley shakes off one man at the line of scrimmage just took his leg away and picks up the first down. Gelsheiser now has 14 tackles in the ball game. He's a quarterback, ex-quarterback. You like to see that, you know? Now, you quarterbacks are tough. He's a leading tackler coming in. <laughs> uh, mentioned earlier about uh, Jim Kelly and Joe Paterno, we had lunch with him yesterday, was telling us about he's really, he's a... I said, Joe, I mean, uh, Jim, if you don't play quarterback, there's other positions. You could probably be a linebacker. He did well. Ball is handed by Todd Collins to Tyrone Wheatley, and number 89, uh, Eric Clare, is right there when the handoff occurred, and uh, there's no gain. We haven't called the names of Jackson Clare and Ben Foddy a whole lot today, but... As we said, there's a reason why at Penn State the linebackers get so many tackles. And normally the reasons are those three big dudes hunkered down in the trenches in front of them. That's, that is so true. Uh, and, and the premier position here at this defense is linebacker. It's like the old days at Southern Cal was the tailback. Wheatley again. To the five-yard line, Lee Rubin got just enough of his shirt, was able to hang on through all of his 190 pounds on his back and dragged him down. First and goal, Michigan at the Penn State six, and this could be the marketplace right here. Is this a big play? Michigan needed to do something. Of course, 39, Rubin is going to come and make the play, but watch the blocking ahead. Now, Wheatley doesn't get caught from behind very often. Watch Rubin, number 39. He's only 5'9". He's a short guy, but he is a tough, tough hitter. Wheatley is out, and Ed Davis is in a tailback. Give it to Davis. He comes off the bench, ice cold, and they stick it in his hands. And he is brought down by Brian Monahan, number 36. Wheatley out getting a breather, 26 carries and 167 watch yards. The, watch the block of Foster, number 33, the fullback, on Dingle to help set it loose right there. Dingle was coming up, making the force. I bet Wheatley hasn't been caught from behind uh, more than uh, two or three times in his career. Hayes had a good block. That was critical. Second down and goal. The ball is right around the seven, and Todd Collins says something wrong here. I'm not paid to make these decisions. <laughs> Go straight to the coach. Six minutes even to play in the game. Presenting a luxury car that redefines your expectations of an automobile. It features dual airbags, power windows, mirrors, and door locks, and an AM-FM high-power stereo cassette, all standard. Introducing... Uh, excuse us. Are you talking about the Civic LX? No. Oh, sorry. It's just that it has all those features, too. How nice. The Civic LX from Honda. Could you move the car now? Now, the most advanced motor oil in Quaker State history comes with the biggest rebate in Quaker State history. Get a $4.20 cash back rebate on new advanced formula Quaker State. That's $4.20 cash back. Hurry, see your Quaker State retailer before November 30th. Hitachi. Mm, they make a... Uh... Oh, oh, great shot. Now, what was I saying? Hitachi makes camcorders and 20,000 other products worth celebrating. Hitachi. 
Wouldn't it be great if you were stranded on a desert island huh? with a beautiful woman named Betty? Cool. And while scouting the island, you were suddenly surrounded. You! But then, they oh. noticed your shoes. You! Great one! Booga booga! So they gave you gifts. Keystone! Keystone, Keystone Light, and Keystone Dry. Especially lined for really smooth. Bottle be a taste! It can! Wait in time! about to run out. That's why more than anything else, Collins called his time out there, Todd Collins. Now Michigan has the ball, second down and goal. The ball is is uh, very near the seven-yard line. Tyrone Wheatley now is back in the lineup at the tailback position. Michigan 14-13 on the scoreboard and trying to add to it right here. Wheatley with the ball up the middle to the five. Maybe just inside the five. And they'll unwrap him and find Eric Clare with his arms wrapped around the legs of Tyrone Wheatley. I'm sure that Moeller would have loved to have seen Wheatley score that touchdown when he was running free. That's why the tackle by Rubin, if he would have scored a touchdown, they'd been up by eight points. Now he's still got to get it in there. And he, field goal puts him up by four. But a touchdown is almost the door slam. But they you would have to exactly. get a touchdown but, and a two points. But you don't want to lose the field goal by doing anything silly down here. But his field goal kickers missed twice today already. Third down. Pass thrown out for the fullback. Foster. Touchdown, Michigan. Here's Foster right here. The tight end's going to go in here and take all the defenders with you. And right out here in the flat, going to fake it up the middle. The tight end takes three guys with him. That's a hell of a call right there. Elizabeth for the point. You've got five minutes and 12 seconds to play in the game. Michigan leads by eight. So you're actually putting money away. Yeah. It's unbelievable. I've changed. Especially since the baby. Dad would be real proud. So what do you have your savings in? I've been savings. What kind of savings? The bank. Want to do me a favor? Talk to my broker, Payne Weber. You probably manage that money a lot better than the bank. This is my savings we're talking about here. I mean, how's a broker supposed to know what I need? He'll ask. Save right now. Buy three Goodyear tires at the regular price. Get the fourth tire free. That's right. Buy any three of these Goodyear tires at the regular price and get the fourth free. Four for three now. Hurry. Savings end soon. She says she left her lights on all day. Who gives you free emergency service if your battery ever needs a jump start? You're all set now. The Die Hard. Only at Sears. We're driven to satisfy. The interior of the new Honda Accord creates an open environment. It's roomy and comfortable and available in fine leather. The reinforced body is insulated to be quieter than ever. When you consider everything the new Accord has to offer, it becomes an open and shut case. The new Accord EX from Honda. It's a happy sideline for the guys wearing white. Shea Foster is the man who caught the touchdown pass, and uh, Michigan will kick it off now to Penn State. Penn State will have Shelly Hammonds and Kajana Carter as the deep people. Hammonds was involved in a most critical play in which Michigan took the lead. They caught him offside instead of uh, a missed field goal on fourth down. All of a sudden, Michigan yep. got a first down and stuck it in the end zone. You know, he wants to do something uh, to make up for that. Betty. These two guys are dangerous back here running this kickoff back. 
Well, the ball keeps blowing off the tee. That's the third time it's happened. And uh, with 5 12 to play in the ball game now, there'll probably somebody come over, Walter Smith come over and hold it. Wind is at the back of Michigan. Penn State undefeated coming into this ball game with a record of 5 0. Oh. Michigan 3 and 2 coming off a loss at Michigan State last week. A but touch. if they can win this game, they may save a season. The touchdown pass to Foster, Shea Foster, that touchdown pass was his first of the season and only his third catch of the year. That may be why he was so wide open. Here's the high kick carrying the wind's got it back into the end zone. No return after the 20 to come first down. Let's go back and take a look at the series uh, when Penn State could not get in. This is a first play. The defensive line is pinching. Quarterback sneak, no gain. Defensive line is pinching in. Everybody's in tight. Again, quarterback sneak, no gain. Third play, give it to the tailback. The defensive line, again, everybody's pinching, no gain. Now, the, the first play of the fourth quarter, the line goes out, the two linebackers step in, and because the line was slanting out, there were several missed blocks, and Penn State didn't score. They did come back the next series and get a field goal, but no touchdown. Now Kerry Collins pitches outside to Kajana Carter. And Carter is up to the 26-yard line. Second down, four coming up. But the point is, Bob, the Michigan defense, which has been a soft spot on the team, has truly, surely stepped up today. It's a, it's a big point, Keith. If Michigan goes on to win this game and Dyson is back on the field, it'll be because of that defensive stand down there on the goal line. And it may carry him the rest of the season. We talked about at the beginning, this was going to be a character check for Michigan. Terry Collins down the middle. Big time. Brady catches first down at the 42. The game's coming up behind our game. The bottom half of the doubleheader, if you will. These are regional telecasts. Big Ten in the first one. SEC second one. Pac-10 the third one. And down at the bottom in the Big Eight, a big ball game with Colorado and Oklahoma. There have been no turnovers so far today. On first down, Kerry Collins to the sidelines. And it is off the hands of Justin Williams, number 27. He had a man short of Williams. He chose Williams, and, and he couldn't get to him. I don't know. That wind may be strong enough to be affecting a ball thrown in that direction because the flags are just stiff. They are at the top of the stadium. And uh, whenever somebody kicks off from left to right into the wind, it's always been a squib kick. Four minutes and 22 seconds to play in the ball game. 21-13, Michigan leading. Ball is at the 42 for Penn State. Man turned up field, got away with it. Pass is thrown to Bobby Ingram, and it's incomplete. Funny, how does the wind feel to you on the sidelines? Man? Well, the wind's blowing right into the Penn State offense, Keith, and sometimes it'll change direction and be blowing from left to right, so it can definitely affect a pass thrown on the line to the sideline. Third and ten coming up. The last two passes by Kerry Collins have not been very pretty. And he's going into that breeze, whatever. You know, a consistent wind is not bad, but when it swirls, it's tough. Throws to the sidelines. That won't get it done, though. That's only a five-yard pickup. He threw it all the way across the field to Chip LaBarca. And it's fourth down and five. Does he go here? Four minutes and ten seconds. So do they punt it here? No, no, no. It's too soon. They got to punt it here. Mosello's fourth kick of the day. And uh, Derek Alexander counting people. He wants all the help he can get. Wind grabbed that ball and it 
takes a straight sideways bounce and trickles out of bounds at about the 21 yard line. College football on ABC Sports has been brought to you by American Honda, who's been making quality cars in America for the past 10 years. State Farm Insurance, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Napa, we keep America running. And Epidac 24, the first cold tablet for consistent 24 hour relief. So put it on the 20 now for Michigan. And all they want to do is fiddle around, fall down, pick up a first down. First down. Fiddle around, pick up the first down. They need three, and they could probably run out the clock. Crosses the 35 and gets to the 36. A 16 yard pickup for Wheatley. Cliff Dingle, the tackle, and here's Lynn again. Well, Keith, when we started the ball game, one of the stories was this sod field that was rolled in just three weeks ago, and throughout this ball game, it has held up tremendously well. Every once in a while, when a player makes a cut on what is a seam, it lifts up just a bit. But as you can look at this field, it's in great shape. Wheatley stays in. He's been the big gun today again for the Wolverines. Got it again. To the 40. That's about a three and a half, four yard pickup. Clock trucking long at 320 to play in the game. 21-13, Michigan. And Florida has uh, come back to lead Auburn 20 to 14. There was a field goal and a missed extra point there. Both teams have two timeouts left. Well, I guess they kicked the ball. They kicked the ball. <laughs> Wheatley. Yeah. That's his uh, very simple old basic philosophy right here. When you've got a good horse, ride him. And that's what they're doing. Time permitting, we'll have the thrifty car rental postgame report for you with scores and highlights. And the clock continues to run, 235. They'll need uh, another, maybe two more first downs in order to seal the clock. Ed Davis and Shea Foster in the back field. 220, home folks restless. They want to see their team with the ball. Here comes Davis. Fresh legs. First down, Michigan at the 45-yard line. So move the chains. The Chevrolet most valuable players of the game are Tyrone Wheatley, 29 carries on 190 yards, and there's still some time left. Brian Gel Gelsheiser, 14 tackles for Penn State. He's played a Super Bowl game. And with the ball resting at the 45 of Penn State, a timeout is charged to Michigan as Sean Miller is shaken up and the left guard has to come out. At offensive line of Michigan, we, we said coming in, it would be critical going against the Penn State line. They've answered the uh, questions about that and Gary Moeller with a, what I think an outstanding call down here, Keith, the touchdown pass to Shea Foster, only his third reception of the year, forced Penn State to go for a touchdown and not a field goal. Hand it to the big guy, Foster, the fullback. He's a 240-pound sophomore, and he's down close to the 40-yard line. And now Penn State's going to have to start spending their times up. They've got one left and 143 to play in the game. Wisconsin winning big, but their quarterback has a severe ankle sprain. So they're undefeated in the Big Ten. You got to look at them. Illinois is beating Iowa, and Illinois goes to Ann Arbor. And Illinois is always poisoned, it seems, for Michigan. This could be like a few years ago when three or four or five teams uh, tied for the Big Ten championship. Michigan goes on to win this game. Penn State will have one, and then, of course, Ohio State will be sitting pretty undefeated. Michigan State was undefeated, as was Wisconsin. Here we are right here. Coming into today, 
Well, Penn State will, unless something terribly dramatic happens, will drop with a loss. Ohio State uh, playing Michigan State later. They're in for a pretty good fight. Wisconsin's going to win. They're going to be three and zero. Oh. We know that. So either Ohio State or Michigan State, their numbers will change before the supper table for them. Well, as we said, the Michigan had their backs to the wall. This was a yep. critical game. They had to win to stay in the race. They've done that. Penn State with a loss is not out of the race. And Wisconsin going to 3-0 and is, uh, has their tougher, tougher games ahead of them. This is Davis carrying a sophomore from Detroit. He's at the 38-yard line. Tyrone Wheatley is on the sidelines right now. He has 190 yards in the ball game today. The last Division 1A player to rush for 200 yards in a ball game uh, was what... Uh, Bobby Humphrey in 1987 versus uh, Penn State. Well, you got to give Humphrey. credit to that offensive line. Uh, Runyon, Miller, Melia, Marinero, and Sullivan, and also Jenkins. So the Nittany Lions, uh, as you see, your top ten, and uh, they're going to probably tumble out of the top ten, depending on what happens in the games behind. Not necessarily. But uh, they're certainly about to absorb well, their first loss. In talking with uh, Paterno yesterday, he said, you know, I, we don't know about our team. You know, we played some teams. Uh, they, this were stepping up a notch in caliber to play Michigan. Uh, they really didn't know how good a team they had. But I'd, I'd say they look very much like a Big Ten team right here. Tough, yep. physical, <laughs> yep. you know, defense, run the ball, special teams. 96,719 people came to see it. They saw a good old-fashioned get them hard, knock them down game, I'll tell you. Wheatley is back in the lineup. It is third down and three. Todd Collins gives it to Wheatley. He cuts it back into traffic. Goes for the marker. And he's close. But he's not quite there. So it'll be fourth, I think, and uh, half a yard. Penn State has used its last timeout. They don't have any more. So they can't stop the clock anymore. It is fourth down and a short one. And Michigan will probably go for it. And if they get it, that will surely seal it. As the clock continues to tick away. I think it's a good call, Keith. Oh, I, do I think it's a good call going for it. You're going to turn the ball over if you punt it. You may not if you run for it. If you don't make it, the field position's not that bad. Made it or not. Yeah. It was Wheatley carrying. And the clock now will stop at 52 seconds. Penn State say they didn't make it. And so does Jim Kimberley. That makes it official. And so Penn State will get a final chance. Michigan failed to pick up that one yard they needed there. This game, oh, game is not over. I mean, they're, they're down eight points. They have 52 seconds and no timeouts. Now remember in college football, the, the, on a first down, the clock does stop until they move the chains, and then it starts again. Perry, Collins, sideline. He had a first down. He is rolled backwards. They're going to give him the initial contact. The ball though. came out, didn't it? The ball came out, I thought. But the official came over and marked it. Incomplete. And it's an incomplete forward pass. Both quarterbacks, the Collins boys, have thrown the ball very well. This ball is right on target. That looks like a completion to me and a fumble. Couldn't see, though, from the other side. He may have been juggling it. The ball is on the 35. And it's second oh, down oh. and 10. So the Penn State Nittany Lions need a miracle with 40 seconds. Ticking, pass is thrown to Brady. Brady is well short of the first down and still inbounds as the clock will continue to run. You can't be throwing the ball to your tight end in the middle of the field in this situation. Nope. That'll be a first 
down. The pass is caught by Stephen Pitts out of the backfield. So that should move the chain. And it also stops the clock with 18 seconds to play. We showed you a graphic earlier. Penn State is last in the conference in passing the football. They came in averaging 157 yards a game. That doesn't mean they can't throw it. They just prefer to run it. Collins steps away from the pressure, lets it go, and it is intercepted by Shantae People. And he sits down at the 25. And that will do it. So the Nittany Lions will lose their first of the year. Michigan will go to four and two and stay very much in the race for the Rose Bowl. And 96,719 uh, uh, new record crowd watch the game. Now they start to pile away. As uh, those of you at home look ahead to the games that are coming next in your area. All very, very important game. Just as important as this one. And probably will be just as good as this one has been. It was a good, tough football game. So the final moments will tick away with Michigan defeating Penn State by a score of 21 to 13.